Hello and welcome back to Unbox Reviews. Today, we're going to see how to install Octoprint and how to use it with your 3D printer. So, um, let's see. So first of all, you need to download Octoprint on your computer. So you just go to download. Go with the latest version. You can see all this lovely stuff. But just download Octopipe, whichever the latest version is. Should be about the same. And you can save. And then give it a minute to download. It's quite big. I'll be right back. While you're downloading the Octopipe version, you also, if you're on Windows, gonna need Win32 Disk Imager. But if you're on uh, Mac or Linux, you can do it without just Google it. There you go, it even says here. Load it up. Anyway, just need to download it, so let's right. get to it. The Octopi version has now finished downloading, so open your downloads folder, extract files. Let's get this going. It will probably take a while because it's quite a big file, and then once it's done, you can open 32 disk image, uh, and just click open a file here. And as you can see, the disk files are just check this is done. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, I think it's done. Good. <laughs> Quick. Okay. So now here you'll select your disk. Mine's already set up, so um, I'm not going to do it again. It was a lot of effort. Now it's basically just um, plug it in. And so, next step. So you click right there. Uh, plug in your printer. If you have a webcam, plug that in. Ethernet cable, SD card, obviously, and power. Then, let's see if I still have it. No. Use Putty to essentially yeah, like to go on to the IP of the Pi. And that will SSH, L -R -S -S -H into it. Which then you can just type in the password, expand the file system that's about all you really need to do there and then after it restarts you can open a browser I'll plug it in now because it's not on um, and go to Octa, no come on I love uh, little, what's it called octopi.local, I like um, God damn, Microsoft Edge, so much. <sighs> Let me just get the IP, so we are somewhere. There we go, no, the one. There you go. Right, now we've got the actual IP of it on your network. And that should be able to find it. Or not. So let's see if you can. I'll cut this out, but where's the fun in that? There you go. Once you get to it, it'll say this for a bit and eventually boot up. Um, this is going to be on the CTC guide, but I'll go over what you'd have to do for the other one. So it just starts up. So this is the interface once you oh, set it up for printers off because it is very loud. Very, very loud. So this is the interface that will start once you've gone through the basic start, which is just set up, and set up a login, which I'd recommend because otherwise you can just go on and control it. And uh, here you go. So first of all, I'm going to show you about this sort of interface and the settings for setting up your own printers. So this bit here is all about connecting to your printer so you can click, select your serial port, your board rate of loads um, and then which profile you want and all that sort of stuff state will be what it's doing so it will tell you if it's online ready to print what file it's doing what time lapse settings your print time and all that sort of stuff and down at the bottom you have the files so when you've got them because I've got them on the SD card but then you can have them here you can upload them to by just dragging in files and then you can just click them and print it wherever you are on your Wi-Fi network. Um, so this is the temperature graph here. 
which will show you the current temperature, the target temperatures and all that, which you can set down here to whatever you've set as like PLA, ABS or just any values you want. Control, you can move the printer around, home it, extrude, turn fans on off and all that sort of fun stuff. This, I don't think works with a CTC 3D printer sadly, but it will show you a like real time overview of what's happening. Ooh. And then you can look at all that sort of render options as well. Terminal, so you can type in actual commands, so like M105 I think, which gets the temperature for over here, which you can see updating. Then finally that you've got the time lapse one, which will make a time lapse if you've plugged a web camera. So let's go on to the settings. First of all there's sort of these standard ones here, yeah, so all these different ones you can put in. Printer profile, so this is where you can set up your printer. So name it like um, um, seven five. model. Okay, color orange, whatever you want to have it as, and all this sort of stuff. Which is cool. So you can set that up. You can even have like what's nice ten extruders. Yes. Yes. So I'll have set one up. There you go, seven. Temperatures, so this is where you can set like your presets so you can say um flexible and say it's like two hundred and seven. Um terminal filters you can do stuff but I didn't really understand. G code you can put it so before it starts a job and after it does it. That sort of thing. Features. All of it is kind of self explanatory. Uh, yeah, but. Uh, oh. There you go. Commands, so you can do stuff. Folders. Uh, right. So that's most of it done. But if. So now we're just a sort of CTC stuff. If you have a CTC or make a lot or print the ones on the S3G program, could you call it? You need the GPX plugin, which is basically just get more search for it, install it pretty easily. There you go, you can do you enable it and then you can set it up. So, this is the settings you need if it's a CTC 3D printer. Let's say in here, yeah, all of them as well. There is a, you can just google it and I'll show you all the settings for you. That's about it really. So, why would you want to really use Octoprint? It's mainly if you want to just kind of not have to walk to the printer. Every time you want to print it or just move it around. And you can check what it's doing wherever you are in your house. So thanks for watching guys. If you liked this video, give it a like down below. Subscribe as well if you want to see more. There's going to be loads more, hopefully. If you haven't watched the subscriber update, go and watch that. It's pretty good. Um, comment down below if you've set it up or if you need any help with it and any future suggestions. But before you go, quickly watch this. Guys, if you haven't already, please head over to g28.com using the link in the description. This will allow you to get cheaper games for on Steam or Origin. And it will give us a small kickback that we can put back into the channel getting you more videos. So, thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time. And here's some little bits of footage of the Raspberry Pi in Blooming Action.